Look, I love caffeine as much as the next guy. Seriously, I really do like caffeine. I always tout the benefits of it. But what I wanna do in this video is I wanna give you four different alternatives to caffeine. And I'm not talking about like fuddy-duddy kind of herbal ways to get more energy. I'm talking about ways that you can truly life hack your way into getting more energy, utilizing various compounds that you can find on Amazon or honestly, very easy to find places in general. So let's start with some of the basics of physiology when it comes down to creating energy. And in doing so, I wanna explain alpha lipoic acid and carnitine. But first, if you haven't already, make sure that you subscribe to my channel. Make sure that you check out all the videos that I'm posting up on Tuesdays, Fridays, and Sundays at 7 a.m. Pacific time. And if you haven't already, turn on that little bell so you can turn on notifications to know whenever I go live or post a video. All right, so alpha lipoic acid and carnitine. You've probably heard of carnitine before because it's marketed as a fat loss supplement quite heavily. And here's the thing, carnitine is cool, but it's really when it's combined with alpha lipoic acid that you can get some actual energy that could replace caffeine. You see, carnitine allows free fatty acids to come from its storage form into the actual mitochondria to be used for energy. So carnitine is responsible for taking fatty acids from the cytosol portion of a cell into the membrane and into the mitochondria, which is the actual furnace where you create the energy. Okay, without carnitine, that doesn't really happen. But that's not the fun part. You see, when it's combined with something known as alpha lipoic acid, you get heightened energy because now you're actually taking the food or the nutrients in the cell and you're giving it the ability to regenerate. So what I mean by that is alpha lipoic acid's job is to add an acetyl group to ultimately create acetyl coenzyme A. Now, I'm starting to get complex here, and I promise I'm gonna keep this video very high level so you don't have to deal with my biology. But if you remember from sophomore, maybe junior year biology, we learn a lot about acetyl coenzyme A. Acetyl coenzyme A is ultimately the building block of energy. So without the acetyl group, you just have coenzyme A. Coenzyme A needs an acetyl group. Alpha lipoic acid continually provides it. So what happens is carnitine goes from the cytosol into the mitochondria, brings the food in, okay? Creates energy, creates ATP, really what gives you that spark, that energy. Then it's the job of alpha lipoic acid to create the acetyl group so that it can reattach and go through that process again. Without that, you don't make more energy. So when you add both of those to the mix, you get a very powerful form of energy that could truly rival caffeine when it comes down to mainly mental energy because of the high amount of mitochondria that we have in our brain. Now this one was complex, okay? But let me take you down the path of another one that's a little less complex, but very, very, very fascinating. I'm talking about tyrosine and particularly its effect on those that are sleep deprived. Now, those of you that know me know that I have a little baby boy. Now, he's my life, he's my pride and joy, but he also makes it so I don't sleep a whole lot. And I've got a job to do. I've gotta be on camera, I've gotta run a business, I gotta have my brain being sharp. This means that I had to find a way outside of just loading up on caffeine to be able to get more energy. Tyrosine has even been shown in studies to increase the amount that someone is alert or awake when they're sleep deprived by three hours or more. So that means if you're sleep deprived and you take tyrosine, you can put yourself in a situation where you have three more hours of alertness before you start to crash. I'll take three hours, honestly. So what happens when you take caffeine is your brain overproduces dopamine. That's why as soon as you have some coffee come in, you feel good, you feel alive, you feel like you can take on the world, you start having happy conversations because everything feels good, you've got caffeine. But the problem is you're gonna run out of dopamine eventually. Okay, and that's what happens with caffeine withdrawals, is you run out of dopamine and then you don't feel good. So then you need more caffeine to create more dopamine and expedite that whole process. Well, eventually you put yourself in that situation where you need more and more and it's not very comfortable. Tyrosine stops this in its tracks. You see, because when you run out of dopamine, you're also running out of tyrosine and phenylalanine. That's what happens with a caffeine withdrawal. So if you consume tyrosine, you put yourself back into the game where you can create more dopamine, meaning tyrosine can actually accompany caffeine and make it so you don't have withdrawals from it. But also tyrosine on its own gives you a lot of energy. It doesn't have to be coupled with caffeine. And a lot of it also has to do with catecholamines. Catecholamines are things like epinephrine, norepinephrine, adrenaline, noradrenaline, all that. Now, it may seem like this is something that you only use a small part of the time, but when you're sleep deprived, you're using those catecholamines a lot. 
Believe it or not, you're running on your epinephrine and your adrenaline a lot when you're sleep deprived. And caffeine expedites the creation of that. But caffeine also makes it so you flood your body with it and then deplete your body of it. So tyrosine, once again, makes it so that you can keep your stores of catecholamines like epinephrine and norepinephrine alive. So you have a nice sustained release of them. In fact, there was a study that was published in the journal Life Sciences that found that just a regular dose of tyrosine, not even a large amount, ended up mediating the amount of catecholamines that were normally lost during traditional life stresses. So when you're stressed out, you're consistently draining your catecholamines. Your adrenals are working very, very hard. By taking in tyrosine, you make it so that you can continually produce more without ever running into the state where you're depleted. Again, I can't overemphasize how powerful that is. The next one I wanna talk about is cordyceps. Now this is an interesting one because this is one that's been used in traditional Chinese medicine for centuries. Okay, cordyceps is a specific kind of fungi that actually helps you create more ATP. Remember I talked about ATP when I was talking about alpha lipoic acid and carnitine? ATP is energy, adenosine triphosphate. It's created in our cells, created in our mitochondria, and it's what allows us to actually have energy. ATP is our gasoline in essence. So what it's been found is that cordyceps actually increases the amount of ATP that we create at one point in time. There's a study that took a look at ATP and cordyceps and the whole correlation. Now the study was done on mice, but it's still very fascinating. They took groups of mice, and some of them they gave cordyceps to, and some of them they did not. And what they wanted to measure was the overall increase in how much ATP they had. The mice that consumed the cordyceps ended up having an 18% increase in liver ATP. Why liver? simply because that's what they measured. But the cool thing is, they had an 18% increase in ATP, but they also saw that they had a decrease in the building blocks of ATP. Now wait, that sounds bad, but it's actually good. Because what that means, it means that the cordyceps triggered the body to create more energy from its own natural sources. It's not like caffeine, where you gave your body an exogenous form, an artificial form. All the cordyceps did is encourage the body to create more in a more efficient manner, which is exactly why there was more brain activity and why there was more energy in general when people are consuming, or in this case mice, cordyceps. Now when it comes down to performance, there's another benefit with cordyceps. So there was a study that took 30 adults, again, some of them took a placebo, some of them took cordyceps. And what researchers wanted to measure was the effect on VO2 max. VO2 max is basically your respiration rate, how much you can breathe, how hard you can work. Okay, what they found was that those that took the cordyceps ended up having a 7% increase in VO2 max. Imagine having a 7% increase in your workout, period. That's pretty darn powerful. Now cordyceps is something that up until recently has been pretty hard to just get your hands on. Okay, but if you know my channel, you know that Four Sigmatic is a huge sponsor of this channel, and they are one of the reasons why I'm able to produce all this amazing content. So they have a form of cordyceps that you can consume in a simple drinkable form. So go ahead and check them out in the description when you're done with this video, because honestly, if it's not because you truly need the cordyceps, do it to at least support the channel. So let's move on to the next one. This next one is theocrine. You've heard me talk about theocrine before. Theocrine is a lot like caffeine, but for those of you that don't know much about it, theocrine acts on a whole different system within the body. Theocrine acts on the central nervous system instead of the cardiovascular system. So it is a very close relative of caffeine, but slightly different in molecular structure, meaning it still acts in the same way as caffeine, except it triggers the central nervous system instead of the cardiovascular system. So theocrine is very similar to caffeine, in that it still works on the adenosine receptor, it still kind of reacts in the same way as caffeine, except it doesn't trigger the cardiovascular response. No shakes, no jitters, and studies are showing that there's no habituation or no tolerance that you can ever build up to theocrine. So that's powerful in and of itself. In this particular case, it reduces what is known as 5-HT. 5-HT increases in the body are associated with general fatigue, okay? That central fatigue of just feeling tired. When we have a decrease in 5-HT, the body can create more energy. Caffeine doesn't do this, but theocrine does. So theocrine not only works along the same pathways as caffeine, but in a safer, more tolerant way, it also makes it so you have a more general sense of energy in a way that caffeine does not. So again, these are four ways that you can explore some new energy. I like doing videos like this because personally, I like getting creative. I always like combining things, combining foods, combining herbs, combining things that I can get on Amazon and trying to create the healthiest, simplest way to having more energy and feeling like myself, no matter the situation. 
Because if you're like me and you have small kids or you're just exhausted, you know that you need to find a way to still get through the day. The world doesn't stop when you're tired. So why should you stop? As always, make sure you're keeping it locked in here on my channel. And also, please support Four Sigmatic down in the description below. Get a special discount, and I will see you in the next video.